Oh, hey guys, cute. Captain Matt. We're heading offshore. Got some special guests on board today. What's up, Hello, Nicole Spence? Yep. Yeah. I'm sure for most of you, nobody needs an introduction, but Nicole Spence has a huge YouTube channel. And Captain Dan and Elizabeth, Dan's been on the boat. Yep, Elizabeth's sure first time. Yep, first time with Captain Matt today. Oh, All right. And my first time as well. So, so and we we're got going the sword fishing, which we I'm really lock. excited. We got the lock. So we're going to find out today if Heiko had the skunk in the bag or Dan. Oh, today, the go. pressure's on. All right, Woo! pressure's on. on. We got this. All right, guys, we, we got, got this. We got to get going. We got a we got a moon window, so we got to make the run. All right, we'll, we'll see you out there. See you out there. I see the weight. Still making a headway on her? Yep. We got color coming up here right now, that weight. Okay. See it? Yep. Face it straight out, okay? Oh! oh, 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 oh stop! Stop, Dan! Stop! 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 Stop what? Man, that's a huge fish. Poor Dan, I'm yelling, stop, stop, stop. He forgot to, that I have to get the weight clip off here before he can roll reel in any more line. So I'm screaming stop, 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 so he doesn't hit that clip into the tip of that rod. And right now I'm kind of balancing, putting a little weight on that fish back and forth. I'm, I'm not putting any pressure on it, just feeling it. I've got Nicole jumping on the wheel right now. I can't really reach it. She's working the boat toward the fish. There's a lot going on right here, guys. When you're on the reel, everybody thinks that just because you got an electric reel, you just push a button and the fish comes up. Absolutely not what happens. You can see Dan here, hand pulling the line and working the reel. Even though the reel's running on electric, I'd say most of the time you're hand pulling line into it. You're constantly fighting the fish, adjusting the drag, you know, working the line by hand as well as letting the electric run the reel. Okay, that'd be nice. Now this thing can go batshit crazy at any point in time. Yep. Just nice and easy. Right here. You see her? Nope. But I'm telling you, it's right there. No, I know she's right. All right. I got color way down there. That's her. Boy, she's a big fish. Okay, guys, you can watch Dan here as he's working the rod. I get a lot of comments that, oh, anybody can reel one in with an electric reel. Notice he's pulling this line in inch by inch. We got pretty low drag on the rod. That's the drag slip in there with the rod bouncing up. But literally, you're fighting that fish by hand, even though the reel is cranking. It's just assisting you as you're as you're working. And the reality of life is down here in the keys, we've got a lot of current. Nobody wants to hand crank up a 10-pound lead. 3,000 feet, and I mean nobody wants to do it. They'll do it once, and then we're back on the electric. Woo! Did anybody get the jump, I hope? Yes. You got the jump? Yeah. Damn, money shot. Oh, shit. Get off. All right, thank you. Here we go, here we go, brother. Are you gaining on her? A little bit, a little bit. I mean, it's All right, hold on. She's coming up, I think. Right, she up. might jump again, she might jump again. She's going to. Yeah, it looks like she's gonna jump. Nope, she's going down now. Come on, baby. Oh no, she's pissed. Just let her go. Oh, she's pissed. Oh yeah. Just give her a second. Okay, now we're gonna get back on her. And sometimes those, you gotta be really good, Dan, with that line winding it up. Yep, okay. All right. Sometimes they'll do this for all, and she might go all the way back to the bottom. We don't know. Okay, as we're fighting the fish here, you can see the lines going straight out. Where that lead comes in there where Dan just grabbed that, you can see the start of the leader. He's 150 feet away from the fish at that point. Now she's kind of staying up on top for most of the fight here. So what happens here? This fish, which happens a lot of times, but not always, the fish is going to take off and dump on us. This goes on for two to three hours. The fish eventually dumps, goes to the bottom. The swordfish quite frequently will take their bill and start swinging at the line. When she hit the bottom, she started swinging at the line, hit it on the first swat, and popped the hook out on us. All right, Nicole's up, ready for the drop. I'm gonna start it. If anybody's getting the hook, it's the captain. 
Like You're it. up, Rosie country. Okay. So just grab it like I, I put one thumb there and like one here and a finger inside here. Mm -hmm. You don't want to nick the braid with your your nails. I don't have any nails. <laughs> no. You got more than I got, so. All right, ready? We just or just go like this. Thumb inside, finger, fingers right up inside there, right there. Yeah, that thing. Because if a shark grabs it, it's gonna explode. That's bottom. We're just gonna feed some line out. Mm -hmm. We're gonna give it a minute or so. So you just want to hold the finger on, but keeps feeding it out. You don't want it dragging. Okay. If you you can watch your rod tip, they're gonna be biting it. What we're gonna do is take this lever and we're gonna spin it till it's even with this, and then you just hit one of the red buttons initially let me get speed back up on it we want to give them that you got fish on them right now yep, look, yep. look at your rod tip mm -hmm. so rod tips going let's give them a minute we'll let them because they'll grab all three of the baits we just got to give them you got it's hard to, it's hard to be patient when they're biting so, yeah, it is and that thing's just laying on the bottom it's just laying on the bottom right so now yep giving them an opportunity to chow down yep but you got fish on there watch your rod tip watch this Gourmet buffet. Yep. You know, yeah. I could just envision a big rosy monkey pile on it right now. They're yeah. <laughs> All beating each other up. Oh yeah, they're fighting for it. Okay, I would say whenever you're ready, grab it, flip it up to two. No, no, hit the hit a red button. We got one cat on there. Oh, he's a big Woo! one. Oh, he's a big one. Body. Can you reach him down or want me to swing it over? There we go. Get him in the boat. Oh yeah, that's a nice, that's a yeah, nice rosy. Fatty. Got him. Don't Got lose him. him. That hook might come out. Nicole will kill me. Nothing yet. That's weird. Here, lay it, lay it back down. There's a little rocky stuff down here sometimes. Dragon's not good in this location. No, that'd be bad. Yeah. But I'd lay it down, give it another minute, and if we don't get anything, what we'll do is we'll pick it up and leapfrog it over. We'll burn okay. it up like 50, 60 Bounce feet, then, then we'll drop it back down. I think you're getting bit right there. Yeah, hey, you're getting bit. All right, lay it down. Keep keep giving more line out. Oop. Give them a few seconds. And when you hammer it, if it's not past this, mm -hmm. just load it till it stops loading. If it's not past this eye, then we're gonna just lay it back down again. So go, I say go ahead and hammer it. Flip this up to like number two, right there, and hit the red button and hold it. Go. Oh, you'll see the rod load. Okay, you got probably one on the way it looks. Okay, stop, and then just lay her back down again. That one's getting a ride. <laughs> <laughs> like he's on a roller what coaster. <laughs> Dan's coming up here. He's he's on the hook. Going for three, baby. Oh, yeah, we got at least a double, Dan. Can I see triple? Oh no, double, double, double. double. Big ones though. Damn. Yay. Those are nice. Oh yeah. Okay. Gap out. Watch out for gap. Yep. Here we go. Here we go. Wait. Oh, Dan's beating up my boat. I'm beating the hell out of your poor boat. Hold on. Hold on to the gap. I'll get, you, the, I'll get the weight. Okay. I got this guy. Fish, fish are looking good. Double. Boat's all fed up. <laughs> get the fish back in the boat. <laughs> nice. Those Hello. are those are good fish, guys. Oh, That's awesome. Bravo, babe. Yeah, yeah. Do not get me. He's gonna try to get you. Yeah, he is. And it doesn't take much when they get you, man. You're bleeding. They are tough. I'll let you get the, get them guys, Dan. I'm going to get the boat going back up. What do you think, Nicole? Nice. Double, double. <laughs> hey, guys. Captain Matt here with Marathon Sport Fishing. All right. Got the rodeo hat on because we had a rodeo out there yesterday when we were hooked that big swordfish that went on. I mean, two to three hours we had that guy on. So that was kind of a heartbreak. It was a bit of a rodeo, like I said, but we did score on the rosies. Now these guys, you can see I'm kind of handling him a bit ginger here. Give you a good, good look at them. Okay, the, the, they got real sharp like spines here. On the side here, you can see these little plates. These things are like razor sharp. On their little melons, they got, they got these little they're, they're, they're coming back with real sharp spots. So this guy's got here up on top, on the bottom, the side plate, an extremely sharp, a lot of times, best thing. I've got a towel here, I'm just gonna put it on his head so I can hold on to him. 
You see the towel just bumped it and caught him. So we're going to knock the side off. But very similar skeletal structure. Got a couple little, they got pin bones about halfway down the ribs. Okay. Took a little bit to leave that on there, but that's a belly wall on these things. Totally black. That's why they're called a black belly rose fish. Absolutely gorgeous fillet. Get my guy out of the way here. Knock that off. Like I said, they got a little section of pin bones that go about, let's see. You can see where I sliced it right here. The pin bones go about a, I'd, you can feel them. They go about a quarter of the way down the fillet. Knock the back off on him. Cutting through the pinners. There you go. Here you have it. Absolutely phenomenal eating fish. All right, guys, Captain Matt here. Here's what we're doing with the black belly roast fish from yesterday. I'm going to take and grill the fish. First of all, I'm going to do a baked potato. The potato I've already rolled in olive oil, kosher salt, and pepper. That's going to hit the smoker for about, that's an hour and 15 minutes. In the interim, I'm going to prep out the black belly roast fish. Here we go after it cleaned up. It's been in the fridge in a Ziploc with a couple paper towels under it to keep the moisture off of it. So I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of olive oil initially. Just to give it a good coating here. Doing this by hand. A little olive oil action on it. And I'm going to hit it on the smoker in this particular fish. I just do one side. Find my openings. So I've got a new jar of Everglades fish and chicken. We're going to hit it with that. So why the potato I'm going to put on in a minute here. I'm going to give this a nice dusting of fish and chicken. So what I do is it's going to go hit the fridge for about an hour and 15 minutes while that is cooking. The time it's in the fridge, the protein in the fish will actually bind and kind of suck in some of these spices actually into the meat. So if you guys are going to season your fish and then put it on the grill, you want to give it a good hour. The lemon, I'm going to give you a lemon tip. That's going to go on the grill with the fish. The molecules in the lemon are going to expand. It increases the flavor. It just gives it a lot, like a turbo boost basically when you're cooking your lemon. So, like I said, this is going in the fridge. That's going to hit the smoker. I'll tune you guys in once we've got the fish on the grill. So you can tell looking at the top of the fish that the spice is actually sucked into it. That lemon's going to get nice and juicy. My potato's about done. Today's mandatory cocktail. That's a Hendrix gin and tonic. Okay, here's what we got shaken up upstairs. I'm gonna do little caramelized carrots. Pretty simple, big dollop of butter and a little sugar in the raw, turbinado cane sugar on it. Give them a little roll here, get them a little flipped out. All right. You don't wanna to go too hot on it because if you go too hot, you're gonna you're gonna actually burn that butter and then it's not so tasty with burnt butter. So I'm gonna put the lid on there. Hey guys, we got the U.S. Army Chinook helicopter coming back in from patrol. Happy 4th of July, guys. Big shout out to all the military. I did 12 years in the U.S. Army. Big shout out to all the guys protecting our country and our way of life. All right, back to the rosies. So I am not going to flip the fish here. The rosies have a real high fat content. Once they get closer to done, I'd say they're about halfway done. You're gonna see the fat come up through the top of the fish. Check on the lemon. Ooh, that one's just getting good. So that, we got a few more minutes to go. All right, guys, here we go. Got her all plated up. So the lemon, guys, this bad boy is roasting hot right now, so watch this. I'm not even hardly squeezing, it's just juicing. That is a juicy lemon right there. 
two points into the sink. Like I said, doing the lemon that way is kind of like turbocharging it. We're going to give you a quick shot of the rosy, a little lemon juice. You can see the omega-3 kind of coming out on the fish. It's, it smells amazing. You guys smell that? It's my first time trying the Everglades fish and chicken. It's great. Absolutely excellent. I use the Everglades heat spice all the time on a lot of stuff. The carrots are a little crunchy right in the very middle. You can't really screw up a baked potato. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. I had an absolute blast fishing with Captain Dan, Elizabeth, and Nicole Spence. I've got links to their channel below. Nicole is opening a bed and breakfast down here in the Keys. And with a little persuasion, you might get me as one of your charter captains. She also has a bed and breakfast up in Venice, Louisiana, if you guys are interested in fishing up that direction. And check her out on Nicole Spence on YouTube as well. I've got links to everybody's channel below in the description. Again, Captain Matt signing off for today. And if you haven't had a chance yet, please smash that subscribe button.